ask yourself that you give sadaqah, you print the Quran, and you give it out to one of the biggest da'wah organizations in the world, right? And be given out to non-Muslims by people who have who experienced to speak to them about Islam, right? Um, so guys, don't waste this opportunity. All this amazing work has been done. Go to live.ira.org uh, slash one. Sabur, you, you and Dr. Mustafa speak, I need to get an update on the donations, yeah? Because I don't know what the, the amount is. No worries. So, Sheikh Mustafa, when we are conveying the message of Islam and we are, you know, printing out these Qur'ans, we're giving them to non-Muslims and they're reflecting upon them, they're thinking about them. I want to ask you a direct question here. Do you not feel that the Qur'an as a book is something for far too long, is something that Muslims have just hoarded and kept to themselves? Because the non-Muslims that accept Islam, the Qur'an frees them from the shackles and the darkness of this dunya and allows them to live a life that's fulfilling, a life that's meaningful, a life that helps them escape this empty materialism and helps them deal, helps them deal with a lot of very painful issues which come up in life like the death of loved ones or even finding out that your own mortality is near. If you remember, we were in uh, Young and Dundas in Canada back in 2018. And when me, you, and there was another brother called Umar, we were there, we were giving dawah. And we came across a young Jewish man who actually was dying from cancer and he wanted to find out about Islam. It's people like this that benefit from these Qur'ans, from these booklets, from the dawah that we're doing. And this is why we have to continue it. How do you feel when you find out that people, are, their lives are getting better by reading the translations that are being given out? You know, the other day I was watching this uh, YouTube video of a lady who accepted Islam at the age of 87 or 90 years old. Yes. And subhanAllah, she accepted Islam after her daughter accepted Islam. One thing that she said in that interview that stayed with me till this day, and it's got giving me like nightmares. And she said she had been searching for the truth for so many years, and nobody has ever presented her with a Quran. And yes. she is saying in the video, where have you guys been? And why are you keeping this treasure for yourself? You know, you, it's like you have this treasure and you're, you're hiding it from everyone. You have this vaccine or you have this medicine to all the, the ills of the society and all the problems that people have. And you keep it for yourself and you don't want to share it with everyone else. Right? So remember the other day I was having this, uh, you know, part of the Defender series. I had Isa as a guest, and we're talking about Musa alayhi salam. And we said that the Quran, Allah says it's shifa, it's healing for spiritual yeah. problems, physical problems, social problems, economical problems, political problems, whatever problem that you have, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already given you the, the, the healing, the treatment, the medicine in the Quran. And Allah sampled the prophets. So Musa alayhi salam came to deal with pol political corruption. Uh, Yusuf alayhi salam, if you read his story, he talks about social issues, family dynamics, siblings rivalry, problems facing our youth, and how Yusuf alayhi salam dealt with all of these issues. Financial corruption in the story of Shu'aib. Uh, Lut alayhi salam, the concept of morality. So all, all of these aspects of life are covered in the Quran, but the problem is we Muslims are keeping all of this for ourselves, and, and subhanAllah, uh, you know, some of the, uh, there, there's one Imam in the U.S., uh, Yusha Evans, right? And, and he says that the masjid was across the street from his house, and he never knew about this. And he was struggling, he was searching for the truth. He said, N no one ever told me about Islam. Uh, maybe he had some m Muslim friends, and, and they never told him anything about Islam. The, the masjid was across the street, and the masjid never reached out to them. Subhanallah. And, and so Islam has a solution to all of the, you know, these problems that people, individuals and, and families and societies have. But we as Muslims are keeping it for ourselves. So I think we need to open up and we reach out to people and put it in the radar. And as you know, our job is not to convert people. Our job is to convey the message. Whether we, they Absolutely. accept it or not, it's, it's, their, it's their, their job, right? Absolutely, and you know, you know, guys, I have to interrupt you. I'm sorry, I've got amazing news. 
absolutely incredible news, right? Um, <laughs> so basically, guess how much the total amount is? My phone's dead, so I can't check. So 3, I went and checked on the back back end. We have had. 4,560 Qur'ans donated. Allah. Allah. I told you. Allah. Allah. 4,560 Qur'ans donated. Okay. 4,500. What was it guys? 68? 4,560. Yeah. That means we have about 420 Qur'ans left till we hit our target. Okay. And uh, I just feel, I just like, it's just so amazing. Like how Muslims can come together in Ramadan, get these Qur'ans. They, we know these will be printed now. They will come to Aira. They will come to our shipment center and they'll be sent out. And Subhu is going to call Johnny and he's going to say, what are you doing? I told you don't get rid of them so quickly. And they're all <laughs> gone again. But inshallah, you guys can share that reward and purify your intention inshallah. So uh, I'm so happy, so excited. And uh, I want to bring something uh, special again that Dr. Mustafa, I think everybody will be just shocked and wowed. How many years did um, Nuh alayhi salam give dawah and how is that connected to the Quran? Yeah, 950 years. <laughs> so of course, Nuh alayhi salam is mentioned in different places in the Quran, in Surah Hud, in Surah A'raf, in Shu'ara, and other places. But subhanAllah, they all, of course, all surahs seem to focus on one thing, you know, the, you know him warning his people, then the flood came and he built the, the, the ark before and so on and so forth. It focuses on this and how his people were destroyed. Surah Nuh in Juz number 29 of the Quran, Juz Tabarak, it has a surah named after Nuh alayhi salam, right? This is the only surah in the Quran that focuses on the da'wah techniques of Nuh alayhi salam. How he invited people to Islam day and night, the logical arguments that he used, he invited them individually and publicly, privately, and you know, and, and secretly and publicly. So it focuses on all the da'wah techniques that he used. The logical arguments, how Allah is the creator of everything, he sends down rain, and, and so on and so forth. And subhanAllah, he spent 950 years in da'wah, and this is the only surah that focuses on his da'wah techniques, the go rap, you know, and his da'wah techniques. And this surah. If you count the Arabic letters in the surah from the beginning to the end, the total number of Arabic letters in Surah Nuh is 950 Arabic letters. <laughs> Isn't this something else? 950 years in Dawah, 950 Arabic letters. Right? And subhanAllah, the other example I gave, if you read in Surah Kaf, we read every Friday, right? So at the beginning of the, the surah, the surah has four stories, right? The, the youth in the cave, the rich man with the two gardens, Musa alayhi salam and al-Khidr, and the last story is Dhul Qarnayn, right? The first story talks about the youth, the story, how they fled, and they slept in the cave, and of course they stayed there for 309 years. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you know, they stayed in the cave for uh, 300 years, adding nine because when you convert the gregorian calendar of 300 years because you know the lunar calendar the islamic calendar uh is the the hijri year the islamic year is 10 11 days shorter than the gregorian year and this is why for example ramadan moves up 10 11 days every year so if it starts on the 13th this year most likely next year it's going to fall on the second or the third of april Right? So it moves up 10, 11 days. So the 300 Gregorian years, if you convert them to Hijri Islamic years, it's going to be 309. And this is why Allah says they stayed for 300 years plus 9 because of the conversion. So at the beginning of the story, this, the first story of the youth in the cave, it says how long did they stay in the cave? And at the end of the story, it says they stayed for 309 years, right? So if you count the number of words between the question at the beginning of the story and the answer at the end, from the word stayed in the question to the word stayed in the answer, the number is 309 <laughs> words. <laughs> so, Muhammad, this is... You know, just these numerical miracles are enough for somebody to take shahada. Because how can you do that? The Quran was being revealed at different times, right? Yes. 
uh, different places, it fragmented, it is just unbelievable, subhanAllah. And the Prophet Sallallahu didn't know how to read or write, so, you know, he told the scribes to write down everything the way he received it, right? So there is no way he could have done this on his own. It, it, it must be a revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah. And guys, this is what we're distributing to people. Uh, Alhamdulillah. So guys, go to live.ira.org. Let us, look how we're being fascinated by this because Alhamdulillah, we're Muslims, we can appreciate it. You could give a pound tonight where someone gets a copy of the Quran, accepts Islam, becomes a Muslim, and then is sitting 10 years later in Ramadan, hearing Dr. Mustafa, maybe he's got a few more white hairs, saying the same thing and being amazed by it. Of course, that can happen. So guys, take this opportunity, donate 100 pounds for 100 Qur'ans, donate 10 pounds for 10 Qur'ans, donate 1,000 pounds for 1,000 Qur'ans. We only need 400 pounds left to be hit our target, inshallah. And uh, please join us and try and take, 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 a, take part in this opportunity, inshallah. And I, I don't really uh, call it a translation, Ya Isa. Yeah. I call it translotion. <laughs> you know, when, when you have a burn and you put the lotion, so it's done with Ihsan. I, I know everyone who has done a translation of the Quran, you know, they promote it as the best translation in the whole world. Even if the translator himself is not qualified to translate in the first place. Maybe he is an accountant, maybe he is an electronics engineer. It has nothing to do with translation. And every time I see this, Ya Isa, I remember Sabur. And I say, every time I'm invited to someone's house, before Corona, of course, they say that they make the best biryani. But this can't be true. <laughs> not all biryanis are made equally and not trans all translations are made equally. This one, believe me, it's done with Ihsan. I spent my whole life at Al-Azhar, more than 35 years, learning Islam and the Quran in Arabic and in translation, Islamic studies. I got all the degrees at Al-Azhar, which is the most prestigious university of Islamic studies in the world. And, and this is my field, it's my uh, specialization. And, and again, uh, only the Quran in Arabic is perfect. But I have done my best, inshallah, to reflect the meaning, to give him a flavor of the rhymes and the rhythms and the style and the beauty of the Quran, subhanAllah. And, and I think this translation has come closer, you know, than any other uh, translation in conveying this meaning. So from a Dao perspective, I think in all humility, this is the one. This is a translation for Dawa. It's done with Ihsan and it is done with love. One one hundred percent, and uh, you know, Doctor Mustafa, I feel that when I read it, right? Because I, I love this translation. I have it in my house as well. I've given it to my family members as well. Obviously, Alhamdulillah, Allah Mubarak. I get the special editions. I have uh, I have got special editions from you. I think I think I'm due something special very soon, right? Once it comes out, um, and and I'm not just saying that because of that, but I genuinely, it, it just it's a different experience for me, uh, for me. And Alhamdulillah, how amazing is it that a non-Muslim can have the same experience as well, inshallah. Um, I am a non-Muslim, grateful for the teaching. SubhanAllah, Dr. Mustafa, we've got non-Muslims listening to us. Uh, and we'll oh, there we go. MashaAllah. <laughs> alhamdulillah. So I've seen, Alhamdulillah, so many uh, people accepting Islam after reading this translation. Because it talks to, to them. I studied comparative religion at Al-Azhar. I studied the Bible. And, you know, there are some stories in the Quran that, that are similar to, generally, the, the stories in the Bible, like the story of Joseph and, and Moses and so on and so forth. Of course, there are some differences. But I used a similar style. So, for example, when Moses, Musa alayhi salam, went to Pharaoh, and he says, فَأَرْسِلْ مَعْيَ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ In the Bible it says, let my people go. And other translations of the Quran, they say, let uh, the children of Israel leave or something. So I use the word go because they can relate to this word. And also in the translation, of course, we have two editions. We have the one for Muslims and we use the word Allah. And the Dawah edition, we use the word God because... Non-Muslims can better relate to the word God, right? And of course, and I explained in the introduction why the word Allah is a better word, the word 
uh, God does not convey the full meaning, but I use the word God because you guys can better relate to this one. So it's done uh, with uh, non-Muslims in mind. It answers all of their questions about the purpose of life, why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals the Quran, all the so-called controversial ayat are explained in detail in the footnotes. It makes it super easy for, for people to read and, and relate. 100%. Uh, there's just a question. Can I donate in PayPal? Yes, you can, inshallah. Try the link live.ira.org slash one or go to ira.org. But obviously, you'll have to label that it's thing uh, uh, it, that it's for the Quran. Uh, but yeah, it should be possible, inshallah. Uh, but yeah, subhanAllah, that, that, you know, it's so incredible that you say that, Dr. Mustafa, is that people who are donating today for this Quran, there's so much that they have. They have a Quran that's been through this, this translation that's been through so translation that's been through such a journey right yes. specifically made for non-muslim even the non-muslim version we made it and replaced it Allah with God so that they can better relate to it right and that's what you are paying for and is coming to us and we're giving it to a non-muslim and it's Ramadan and your deeds are multiplied by 700 times and your sins are wiped away and calamities averted from you what more are you asking for look how merciful Allah is live.ira.org Go there, inshallah. Give a donation. Give a donate Qurans for us, inshallah, and allow us to spread this as far as we can, inshallah. Inshallah. And you know, Isa, in my humble experience in the last 15, 16 years in the field of dawah in North America, 70%, it could be more or less, right? 70%, around 70% of the people who accept Islam, it's because they read the Quran. Maybe 25% or 20% because they came across a good Muslim, they, they have Muslim friends, and 5% for different reasons, you know. But the, the, the biggest reason why, the number one factor in my humble opinion and from personal experience, why people accept Islam is because they read the Quran. So I think this is a very wor worthy cause. Inshallah, if someone wants to donate from their zakah, sadaqah, go for it, inshallah. Just definitely Jazakallah khair. So guys, look at uh, how big the opportunity is for somebody to inshallah accept Islam from this. And by the way, this is not uh, a free Quran that we just hand. You see a non-Muslim, you just leave it next to him on the bus. No, not at all. Or you just post it to everyone's letterboxes on your street, right? Hoping that a non-Muslim gets it and takes other. No. This is given to people who we have a conversation with about Islam. This is given to people who are interested in the Quran. So either they'll come up to us and they'll say, Oh, you, you guys even have free Quran, can I have one? Or we'll have a good conversation and we'll give it to them, right? It's not that every non-Muslim walking past, we try and give it to them. If they want it, they take it. If they don't, they don't know. It's very calculated. So inshallah, it's also going to the right people, inshallah. So the, the reward is massive. And uh, Dr. Mustafa, what is the reward if one person takes shahada to somebody's Quran that they donated? This is immense, man. So the Prophet ﷺ says to Ali ibn Abi Talib anhu and some other Sahaba, if someone accepts Islam through you, it's better than this world and everything in it. There are different narrations of the hadith, but it's the best thing that you can do as a Muslim is that for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide someone through you. Every time they pray, they fast, they go for hajj, they give zakah, when they get married, if they marry a Muslim or the, their, their spouse accepts Islam and they have children till Yawm al Qiyamah, the day of judgment, all, all of their good deeds will be shared with you. Every time they do something good, you will be sharing the reward for, with them. If, la qadr Allah, God forbid, they do something bad, you're not sharing the sin. You just share the good, right? So this is something that is going till Yawm al Qiyamah. I remember, subhanAllah, couple of years ago I got this message request on Facebook because from someone that I didn't have in my you know Facebook friends and he said he sent me a long message and he said that he and his wife the, they were Islamophobes so they hated Islam so much and they were promoting you know things against Islam and one time they were having a debate with someone and that Muslim challenged them have you read the Quran and they said no and he said, how can you attack the Quran if you haven't read it? And he gave them a, cop a copy of the clear Quran. And he said, within a month, we finished the translation. It answered all of our questions. It put all of our doubts to rest. And he and his wife, they accepted Islam. And they reached out to send me a message to thank me for this translation that made it easy for them. 
And he, is, he said he and his wife, they had attempted to read the Quran before, but they couldn't go past page number two or three. Because the style was very difficult. It was awkward. Thou and giveth and maketh and this Shakespearean style. No footnotes, no introductions, nothing. So they felt the translation was very dry, archaic, very old. So they, they couldn't finish, right? But they said this is the first time they were able to read the whole Quran. And Alhamdulillah, they accepted Islam. SubhanAllah. That is absolutely incredible. And guys, that's just one story. Like we said, people are lazy. There are so many people who have accepted Islam through this translation. They don't all message Dr. Mustafa. They don't all WhatsApp him or Facebook him or email him or anyone. They read it, they accept Islam, they go on. And you know, subhanAllah, the amazing thing is that you will donate today, inshallah, right? Live.ira.org slash one. And someone will accept Islam and they'll do their Shahada story and it's going to be on YouTube like maybe 12 years from today. That person will never know it was you. They might see Sabur gives it to them or someone else gives it to them. They will never know your name, right? They'll never know who you are, where you live, where you're from, who you are. But Allah knows your name. And Allah knows, and the angels are recording, this person gave the pound, that was printed by Ayra, and it was given, and the reward comes back to you, inshallah. So just imagine that. Like this couple, they hate Islam, now they've become Muslim. This is two people, two clear Qur'ans. Imagine you give a thousand pounds, and you have a thousand clear Qur'ans, or 500 pounds, 500, or even if you give 365 pounds, that's a Qur'an given to a non-Muslim every single day of the year, for one year, which means Ramadan will come again next year, and we won't have given out all because Ramadan comes uh, 15 days b uh, before every year or uh, something like that. So it, we still wouldn't have finished it. So guys, go to live.ir.org and donate. How do I donate with a debit card? Because on the IRA site, only a credit card is possible. No, you can donate with any card. If, as long as it's Visa, MasterCard or uh, major cards, it will work inshallah. So live.ir.org slash um, one. So yeah, that's it, uh, Dr. Mustafa. You know, what about if somebody pure, uh, you know makes an intention that many people take shahada? And they don't. Do they still get rewarded for their intention when they're donating for the Quran? Yeah, of course. We Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you for the effort, not the results. And this is something, of course, we learned from the story of Noah alayhi salam. 950 years in da'wah, go rap, all the logical arguments, reaching out to people, speaking to them privately and publicly, and eventually a handful of people that can be counted on the fingers of one hand, accepted Islam, as Allah says in Surah Hud, right? But still, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honors Nuh alayhi salam. He's one of the top five prophets of Islam. So we have Ibrahim, Nuh, Musa, Isa, and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam. We call them the prophets of Ulul Azm, the prophets of firm resolve. He is in the highest places of Jannah. There is a chapter named after him in the Quran. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honors the prophets because of their efforts, regardless of the results, right? So we do our best, we contribute, we support this effort, and it's in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in any case, you will be getting the reward even if no one takes shahada. That, that's absolutely incredible. Jazakallah khair for that. Really, really appreciate those words. Subhanallah, that's absolutely incredible, guys. Just imagine. Imagine 100 pounds and 100 Qur'ans are given out and one person becomes Muslim, they get married right to another Muslim uh, and then they have children and they read Qur'an and then they have children and, and that family is Muslim and then you know one day one of the great grandchildren say oh by the way did you know we, we weren't born Muslim one of our great great grandfathers accepted Islam right uh, he loved biryani so much that he was always interested in the Muslim <laughs> culture and stuff and then he got a copy of the Quran because he came across it and he read the Quran and he accepted Islam so you know it's it's amazing inshallah guys don't miss out on this opportunity um, donate now inshallah I'm just gonna do uh, Dr. Mustafa if you can just tell us a bit more about uh, the experiences that you've had giving out these Qurans and the Dawah I'm just gonna check the stats on the computer inshallah uh, do inshallah. you give this out in uh, Dunda Square? Yes, Alhamdulillah. And also, we give a, we get a lot of requests from the prison system uh, in the U.S. and in Canada, and you know the inmates because they have nothing but time and they want to read. And Subhanallah, just like at the beginning of Islam, at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, 
the you know the people who you know who who have no hope in life the people who feel like they have been mistreated by society or you know so they always look for something bigger than themselves they look for something to give them hope and in the time of hardship and difficulty people look for saviors and of course the quran subhanallah like gives hope and it gives uh, salvation and one interesting thing about dawah in the prison system for example is that subhanallah i get a request someone is asking for a copy of the quran i mail it out to them and subhanallah a few months later i will hear back from the person and he will say you know i finished the, the translation i pass it to my friend in jail he read it he accepted islam we gave it to somebody else he accepted islam so subhanallah through just one copy of the quran maybe four five seven ten people accepted islam just one copy they read it and they keep it with them in the cell or in the library and other people will read it so subhanallah make sure inshallah you support this as i said at the beginning i have done my part years of my life thousands of hours have gone into the making of this project and all it takes is really like one pound this is nothing man every week we go to the store we buy groceries 70 pounds 150 pounds allahu alam more or less we buy coffee we buy biryani we buy stuff dr mustafa and there's no what? biryani there's no biryani that costs one pound i'm just gonna 